Now over the years I've bought or been sent a lot of riding gear, but I tend to always go with my favourite few, so in response to the many questions I get on the subject, here's a quick run through the helmets, jackets, gloves, trousers and boots that I genuinely do use almost every day, with appropriate links and discount codes in the description. Helmets first. Showy GT Air Royalty when I fancy a scratch on my own, which usually means on the Speed Twin. It's comfortable, cocooning and looks the part, and being a full face, it's about as safe as you can get. Though being a full face and black means it's very hot in the summer. So I bought this white Nolan modular helmet a couple of years ago, but I don't like it very much to be honest and consequently used it a lot less than the other two. It's less comfortable and the slide to engage then push to release sun visor control is needlessly fiddly and always feels as if it's about to break. A showy Neotech 3 is on the list. But my go-to helmet for most rides, Speed Twin, Transalp and ADV Scooter is my faithful old showy J Cruise 1 open face. It's supremely comfortable obviously well vented, which is important here in Portugal, and can be removed quickly and easily. I know it's never going to protect me like a full face, but I'll risk it. I've had it about five years now, and I'm hoping to replace it with the J Cruise 3, which apparently will be here by the end of the year. My go-to jacket in the cooler months is this French-made Segura Fergus. Excellent tailored fit with a couple of pockets and zip vents, and these loops for my cartridges when I feel the need to stop and shoot something. It's reasonably windproof and the supplied liner means you could use it in really cold weather if you wanted. But the main selling point for me is the fit and the fact that it works aesthetically with just about all my bikes. My summer jacket of choice for temperatures above about 26 degrees C is this jacket from Icon. It's the most vented, most meshy jacket I've ever come across and is very cool for the hot summers we have. Okay, it probably won't offer the best protection in the event of a slide, but it comes with elbow and shoulder protection, and there's a pocket here for a back protector if you want to add that, which I have. Crucially for me, it's mostly white, especially on the back and the shoulders, which is where you tend to catch the sun while riding. I could live without the oversized logos on the shoulders, especially as removing them in favour of more exposed mesh would provide even better ventilation, but I guess brand awareness always wins out. For longer day trips, group rides or touring, I use this mega jacket, the Adventure X from UK firm RST. Why mega? Well, it literally has more features than all my other jackets combined. Zips, flaps, vents, pockets, straps, adjusters, inner waterproof, thermal liner, removable pouch on the rear for carrying wallet and keys, etc. And there's even a pouch on the back here for a water bag with a grommet and strap to push a tube through over your left shoulder. I've had the jacket a couple of years and honestly it took me the first 12 months to discover all the features. Every time I put it on I'd find a new zip or flap. Double A rated, it comes complete with shoulder, elbow and back protectors supplied. I like it because unlike my other jackets it can as it were be progressively dismantled during the ride. Put the thermal liner in and zip everything up for the chilly 8 o'clock start and then peel back the layers and open up the vents when you stop for coffee and then lunch. If I'm honest, I could use this jacket and nothing else, as it really is perfect, except for the weight. You don't feel it too much when you've got the jacket on, but my goodness, when you take it off, uh, there's an industrial strength carrying strap on the back, and you certainly need it. Now, the final jacket isn't really a jacket at all. The manufacturer Roadskin in the UK call it a shirt, but if it is, it's an extremely thick shirt. Double A rated, but you only get elbow and shoulder protection this time. You have to pay extra for the back protector. It's made of cotton with a Kevlar inner and light mesh liner. I'd say it's ideal for spring and autumn. Two chest height zip vents and pockets on the front, a couple inside, and that's about it. I wear this exclusively with my Speed Twin as an alternative to a leather jacket. It's got a very nice cut and looks great, although I think they missed a trick by not using their very nice winged logo, but I'm guessing it was too difficult to embroider. Maybe a little bit pricey at €195, Euros, but Roadskin is currently offering channel viewers a 10% discount across their website, so that should help you a little. They're based in the UK, but are in the process of setting up a warehouse in the Netherlands, I believe, so this should make things easier if you're ordering from within the EU. As for all the items mentioned, the links will be in the description below.
Right, on to gloves, which, as we all know, should be worn at all times. I have three main pairs, but 90% of the time I wear the Knox Urbane Pros, shown here on the right of the screen. As you can see, mine are pretty worn. They're the originals, and I believe they're on the Mark III now. But they're very comfortable and well-vented for summer riding. I like them especially because they have palm sliders, so that when you put your hands out as you fall, your palms won't dig into the tarmac and break your wrists. Hopefully I'll never have to test this theory, but it's reassuring to know that the sliders are there. Otherwise, as an alternative to the Knox, I sometimes use these semi-vented Revit calibers. They have the benefit of being light grey and so less hot in the sun than the all-black Urbane Pros, but no palm sliders and they don't have those phone screen compatible fingertips, which is annoying when you use your phone as a navigation device, as I often do. When it's really cold, which here in the Algarve is only from about Christmas to the beginning of February, I wear these bearings. Nothing special, to be honest, and I can't even remember what they're called, and they're super old. I bought them when I took my bike test in the winter when I used to live in northern France, and because I only wear them a few times a year, they've survived intact. Not worth bothering about, really. So, on to trousers. When it's above about 28 degrees, I wear these semi-mesh Revit Eclipse 2s. They offer decent ventilation, but they're a bit on the heavy side, and as I didn't really have any other item of clothing to go with the dark blue or the olive, I was pretty much forced to go with black, which isn't the best on very sunny days. I wish they were available in light grey, like the jacket is. 95% of the time, though, I wear these excellent single-layer Tyrannis jeans I discovered about a year ago. They're made by Roadskin, the same people that make the Munro shirt I mentioned in the jacket section, using Kevlar reinforced denim, and are triple stitched on all the main seams and AAA rated. They also come supplied with level two knee and hip armor and are available in black and indigo. Safety is super important, of course, but the main reason I love these jeans compared to the clunky Dionysus I used to wear is because of just how comfortable they are. They're really soft to the touch and stretch enough to fit over riding boots, but they're also slim enough to be tucked in if you prefer. Unlike other riding jeans I've tried, these are genuinely all day comfortable. They almost feel like sweatpants against the skin. 10% off with the code in the description. And finally on to footwear. Now I have four, or I use on a regular basis, four pairs of boots. Two for the Transalp on the left, two for the Speed Twin on the right. Adventure riding in the winter or in the wet, I'll wear these Marshall boots from Italian specialist Falco. They're available in black or brown, they're warm and sturdy, have a nice thick grippy sole, and despite the ski boot style fastenings, don't feel too bulky once they're on, and they're great when the weather isn't. As with most of my riding footwear, I tend to buy half a size too big, and then fit a nice squishy gel insole for even more comfort. When the weather picks up, I go for these vented Vertigo air boots from another Italian firm, Style Martin. Much lighter than the Falcos and good for a short hike too if the inkling takes you. I find I can get away with vented boots far earlier in the season than I can with vented jackets or gloves. And I use these boots from maybe March to November. Right, when I'm riding the Speed Twin on cooler days I use these Oscar Monte leather boots from Alpine Stars. Had them for years so they're really worn in and exceptionally comfortable. Not that warm for really cold weather or waterproof, but I don't take the Triumph out in extreme conditions, and they're the most urban looking of all my boots. Over the summer I'll put these Alpine Stars vented SMX boots on, I've had these for years too. Ventilation isn't amazing, not as good as the Style Martins for example, but they do provide some degree of cooling and are very comfortable. There's also a slider on the outside which makes me feel like a knee down racer, although as you can see mine haven't seen that much action. So there you have it, all the gear I use 99% of the time. The real standouts for me are the RST Adventure Jacket for all its zips and flaps, the Knox gloves for their ventilation and palm sliders, and the road skin jeans for their supreme comfort. Links and discount codes in the description. Bear in mind that some of this kit I have had for years, as I've said, so there may well be improvements and modifications made to the versions on sale today. Anyway, that's all for now. Let me know what your most bestest, favoritest gear is in the commentarios. And as always, thanks for watching.